Welcome to Randy's Cash, and today I'm going to be opening and playing this NES for the first time. I've never played one. Didn't know anyone growing up that had one. When I was a kid, the first console I remember seeing was probably an N64 or PS1. And my family didn't have one. We didn't get a console until the Wii or the PS2, something like that. So I'm pretty excited to play this. It's in really good shape for the age you know this thing's about 30 years old and i got on facebook marketplace the guy was asking 300 which is what it's worth on price charting and i said the guy flexibility and he said 270 is his best price so i took it and i'm almost scared to play it because it's in such good condition but i'm gonna take it out and see how it looks on my tv i got a older flat screen definitely a lot newer than what they had back then and i've heard light guns that you use for duck hunt won't work on flat screen so i'll give that a try anyways just to see you never know but i'll hook it up and see how it goes so again this is just an example of how clean and nice this thing is the dude said he never played himself he bought it from a store i believe and it's probably only been played a handful of times, if it's been played at all, because this game looks brand new. So we'll get it hooked up and see how it looks. Okay, here's some of the pack-ins that came with it. I got this Nintendo poster. It's super cool. It has a bunch of different games you can get on it. It has Donkey Kong Classic, Metroid... Um, Dragon Warrior, Zelda, Xanadu, Super Mario Bros. 2, some golf, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. So it came with a, some paperwork to file for a warranty. So I'm going to have to do that in case something goes wrong with it. I also got a manual for a zapper, the control deck. Looks like. Oh, it's uh, paperwork to subscribe to Nintendo Power, maybe. So, I got it all hooked up. So, I'll turn it on, see if I can get it to work. And we have life. It doesn't look too bad on the flat screen, as far as graphics go. Gotta figure out how to start it, though. It seems like the light gun does not work. I can fire, but it doesn't read, unless I just have bad aim, but I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm getting it. I've tried several times, and I'll just have to... Try it on an older TV. My parents still have a big box TV I can try it on, so. But, I'll try out Mario and see how that goes. Well, I couldn't get the light gun to work on Duck Hunt, but let's try out Mario. So I get started. I'm doing this one-handed, so give me a break. I'll probably, probably die. Oh, not too bad. This is the first Mario game. This is the parent of everything we know today. And this helped make the, cons the console what it is too. Pretty cool system. You know, for its time, this is really amazing, honestly. And growing up, I had a Game Boy, and this is essentially better than a Game Boy. It's a Game Boy with color. Good color. So yeah, that's my intro to this console I just got. I'm very happy with it. The condition's immaculate. Sometimes the door to put the game in the console is broken off, and this one's really good condition. Like I said, it, it looks brand new. It wasn't, but it looks that way. And I'm happy to add it to my collection. I got a lot of video games. I got about a third of the Wii U set. I have a Wii U console, an N64, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo. Uh, I got a Game Boy Color. I got a regular Game Boy. I got an Xbox 360. 
and I'm kind of hoarding games, I guess, but I think it's almost a fun investment versus regular investments because a lot of the stuff goes up in value. And if not, you can still play with it versus other investments that you don't get a touch. So to me, it's a good deal. And a little bit about the NES. So this thing's about 30 years old. There was a video game crash in the United States and Atari either went bankrupt or was very close to going bankrupt. There's a lot of systems out there, but this revived the video game industry in the U.S. Uh, there's a book about it called The Console Wars about Sega versus Nintendo, but they talk about that, the history of both companies, and it's a very good book. I highly recommend it. But anyways, so because of the video game crash, Nintendo had to work on their marketing when they brought this out. So they made it look more like an appliance and more family-oriented versus a toy family activity and it worked Nintendo did amazing with it and you know they've grown ever since but in Japan they didn't have that video game crash so they could market it a little bit differently and they called it the family computer Famicom and it was a lot more colorful and cool looking and same with the Super Nintendo, they had the Super Famicom in Japan, and they colored it a little cooler too. But I'm very happy to add this to my collection. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and liking. I really appreciate it. And hope you tune in again as I show you more cool stuff like it.